Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. Today, we don't have a lot of news uh, during the daytime. And later on this evening, there'll be some Australian and uh, China news. But for the most part, today is pretty quiet, it looks like. Tomorrow, we will have some uh, red folder areas with the British pound. So be careful about that. That's going to happen probably around 2 o'clock in the morning uh, during the night tonight. So keep that in mind. And then there's another Euro one down here at around uh, four o'clock. And let's just check the other one, our Forex factory for Monday. And I'm not seeing anything substantial for Monday at all for today or Tuesday. We have some New Zealand stuff coming on later on, but it looks like it's a relatively quiet news day today. So we shall move to the charts. And I have an announcement to make, too, for all those of you who are using TradingView and want access to the um, our little trade uh, yes, our, heat yes. map, our heat map. I have a link. We're not totally done with what we wanted to be doing, but we have a free trial version for anybody that wants to try it out. And I will put the link in the uh, chat box. It will give you a chance to try it out. There will be it will be a temporary uh, it's a temporary fix to a complex situation. Uh, so, but anyway, I do have the link available today, and if we can do after this session, anybody that's interested, uh, let me see if any how many people are because what we may do after this session today, I'll give you a link to go to another Zoom room, and we can uh, I can help everybody get set up with it. So. Uh, so just, uh, I know I have some people who sent me the emails. If you prefer, send me an email. Let me know that you are interested in this. It is does only work on TradingView uh, for right now. And uh, but this, is, uh, this is what I use a lot of times to see. It helps me determine the direction of the trade. So that we get these alerts. Uh, sometimes the trades are, the, the alerts are kind of iffy. Uh, this sometimes gives me a little bit of a clue as to which way I'm going to be going with it. Uh, basically, I have four different time frames. This is a one hour. There's a 30 minute. We can't oh. see it all. Oh, that's right. And start sharing my screen. Thank you, Eva. Uh, just to let you guys know, I've put the email address in the uh, chat. Trademasters at gmail.com. And no, it's not a spelling error. It's spelt trade with an I in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a trade with an I. We had to do that because the other one was taken. So, um that's why that's why we, but that's our gmail just send us me a, 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 a email to the trademasters at gmail.com i will put you on the list and then i will get you the uh, link for the free version free trial version of this uh, software but anyway what just to give a little bit more of an indication about what we do we have four different time frames and you can change these to whatever time frames you want i use a one hour a 30 you minute aren't sharing it though I still not sharing it? Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's Monday morning. It's Monday. Me. There we go. Now you should see it. You there see it, it is. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, we have uh, four time frame. I have four time frames with it. And uh, basically I can see which one's the strongest on which time frame. And a lot of times what I do is I look and see, I like seeing the uh, for instance, like right here, the Swiss franc is it's in the top three on uh, the hourly, the 30 minute. It's in the top three of the 15 minute. Now it's starting to pull back a little bit on the one minute. This would tell me this is in a pullback. It's in an upper trend with one minute being on a, or five minute being on a pullback. And then once these flip back over again, then I'm looking now it's going back into the same, continuing the trend. And it just gives us some instantaneous uh, ideas about on which different time frame the, the, the strongest currency is what the weakest are and we, basically I look at the top three I look at the bottom three and I try to see out the ones in the middle 
and we'll go deal with that a little bit more as it uh, goes on. But like I said, we're going to have this uh, ready for you guys to load up and use this week here. So uh, just give me the email. And then I saw we'll put a link into the Zoom room uh, once I find that uh, link. And then after this session today, we can go to that room and I can help everybody get set up with it. Okay. <laughs> And that's the fixes for right now. I don't know how long that free version is going to last. It may be until uh, the, I think it's going to be good at least until you know, the 1st of April. More likely it's going to be past that time. But it all depends on how fast uh, we can get things smoothed out to make things somewhat seamless and getting everybody uh, up and running with this thing. So that's news. For, that was the big news of the day. Anthony yeah, and I worked on that over the weekend. That's what we came up with until we can get everything else working smoothly. Okay, so right now it looks like we have a five minute. There's a CAD yen trade on the five minute. Actually, this one, this is CAD squeeze. This was earlier, a bit earlier this morning. Again, it was an arrow right up into the zone. No trade taken there. And as, as you saw on the heat map, the Swiss was strong. It's still strong, uh, but the yen is starting to pick up a little bit of strength uh, along with it. So this is right now, it's just in a little bit of a pullback. It may pull back a lot, may not pull back much at all. But if we can get a pullback, this could be a nice little Fibonacci uh, uh, move where it comes back, pulls back to the uh, arrow moving average. If it can pull back to that, we're looking at a possibility of a continuation in the upside and maybe be able to catch five, five or more pips out of that. Let me draw the Fibonacci on this just to show you what I'm talking about. Good morning. Move. Good morning there, Matt. Here's the move. And here's the here's the moving average. It's right at the 50% retracement. If this thing can pull back to the to this retracement, and then I start seeing that the on that heat map, the uh, uh, the uh, the Swiss franc starts getting strong again, then we may have enough room to the upside for a, a possible trade and get pulled back to 50% coming up here. There's our 20% move, and then we can just try and go for 20 pips. You can go for five pips or whatever you want. Uh, that was, that's sort of what I'm looking at with this particular pair at this particular point in time right now. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? That's pretty much – here's a 30-minute uh, S&P. Let's see what the S&P is doing right now. I don't like trading the S&P until maybe after the U.S. market opens or any of the indexes. Maybe the Deutsch, uh, the Deutsch 30, uh, the German 30, that might be a possibility while it's now the European markets are open. Uh, but for the U.S. indexes, I kind of like to wait and see how they open up and settle in for, or at least not until about a half hour, half hour or 45 minutes before uh, the U.S. markets open up as they start getting some of the, their positions for the opening bell. Uh, so right now, this is not a trade to me either. So on a 30-minute chart, if I go to a five-minute chart, I, which is what we generally use on this, um, you can see that we actually, this might be a little bank induction. It's a nice strong, we have the arrow coming down into the zone, pulled back. Now we have our little trend coming out. We could possibly get a move to the upside on this one later on, but uh, I would not take it as long as this thing's still pointing down. I, I like to see this. Moving average flatten out a little bit. Let me get the 200 moving average on here. Let me load that up. And see where it look up. And here's some of my other. And you can see that right now we have some consolidation of the moving average. So if we get a bounce off of this, you could get some room to the upside. And that might be, that could be interesting. Is it 40? 172 to 41.74. It's only a $2 move up until it starts running into these uh, moving averages. Uh, I would like to see at least, uh, I'd like to see, I'd like to see a $10 move to try and get a $5 profit out of it. So it's a little bit tight right now on this uh, five minute chart. And until then, we kind of wait. Any questions so far? Not so far, my friend. All right. Okay. And oh, uh, let's see. When I was telling them, Matt, you missed the announcement that I've got a uh, temporary free trial version of the uh, RCS tool available for people who want to be using it for a while to get everything set up. So, 
Perfect, then. That's great. Yeah, so we'll get that. That's great. To, we'll get that for everybody to be set up with. Have did you uh, did you take advantage of the uh, dip in uh, dip in the cryptos this weekend? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, there was a significant dip in them. Though it was, I almost I thought about taking some profits uh, on Friday, and then I didn't get around to it. And but uh, but my cryptos are pretty much of a buy and hold. This it looks like it may be a buying opportunity on some of these. Looks like a pretty good buying opportunity, honestly. Yeah, let's see where is the uh, where's Bitcoin this morning? Bitcoin's down. Well, yeah, Bitcoin got down to fifty five thousand, and now it's to fifty seven. So it's starting to come. They're starting yeah. to rebound a little bit. So well, Ripple Ripple went down to um, one eleven. Yeah, and now it's one forty one. Yeah, and it's uh, it's moving good. Let's just say I've got a couple heavy positions. I had uh, I had a pitchfork and I had a pretty nice wedge. I don't know if you saw it on Facebook feed, but um, there was there was enough there to to go. So, and I I risked it out that even if it came back to like zero dollars, it wouldn't it wouldn't damage the account. Yeah. So. There was a lot of news about Ripple this week in various sources, and uh, the idea is that Ripple is still going to be a, a major player in the crypto markets. Absolutely, was the, inter- was the interpretation that I got. It keeps yeah. getting whacked. It keeps getting whacked. I think those are whoever's in control of things like that are just using it as a buying opportunity. They're driving down to a buying opportunity, trying to shake out some of the weak players and get better positions on it. Well, you got to think, man. People have bought ripple at 20 cents and 10 cents and 15 cents if you're selling at 150 or 175 that's a substantial amount of multiplied profits yeah so there's a lot of profit taking and a lot of new positions being taken and this question is whether you feel that the cryptos are going to be uh, where things are going to be going in the future, or if you just think it's a temporary phase, then that's up to you to decide. Uh, and I don't, I said I don't have a crystal ball on any of that. I know what I personally feel that is going to be going on, but uh, that's um, it's. Uh, and for everybody that says that it's uh, it's a scam, there's another person that says it's uh, this is the wave of the future. So uh, oh, yeah. pick on pick on who you want to believe, and 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 go with your gut on some of this stuff. So. Right. I think these are going to be some uh, opportunities that uh, are only going to be coming along like the internet when the internet came about. Uh, there was uh, a lot of naysayers about it, but uh, we all know where where that's all gone. So, yeah, anything, uh, anything like this. I mean, even the uh, NFTs, the non-fundable uh, NFCs or whatever they're called, those uh, those new coins that they got where you can play a game and they you can buy like a DeLorean and whatever else. Uh, people are making substantial amount of money on that. Like 400 times their their, their investment. So crypto what? is here to stay. I, I don't think I've heard those yet. Oh, you haven't? No, are they like altcoins too? or? Uh, they're different. So say... I, I don't know everything about them, um, but they're not. Um, so it's kind of like it, it reminds me of like Minecraft where you can like buy a plot of land or something. So say you want to buy like New York or Times Square um, and it has a value attached to it. Well, you pay the value and then you can later on sell it again. So it's like a, a game, but they're using like real, real mon- monetary yeah, monetary values. So if I buy like the DeLorean from Back to the Future, well, it's a special item and I can put it in my house and then I can sell it in two months for 400 times what I paid for it. What will it, it it's really, it. there's a lot to swallow, but yeah, there's, it's something interesting out there. This I haven't looked at this, it enough. This, this is way beyond my pay grade. I don't understand any of that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's stick to uh, let's stick to these indices and these. Uh, man, oh man, I tell you what, those indices 
Like we're not we're not playing games with that. Everything's kind of dropping right now, but um, I've been very very happy with the uh, performance of Arrow on Indices. Very happy. Are you saying there was any particular time frame that you're uh... one in five, my friend? One in five. One in five what? One in five minutes. So five minute, one minute. Oh, I, yeah. Okay, yeah. That I, I guess I was thinking more of time of the day type of thing. Oh, uh, German thirty before New York Open until uh-huh. maybe one hour after New York Open, and then I just stop, and then because I'll get my move before then, and I stop trading. Mm-hmm. because uh, I found that myself, um, if I keep on trading, I'll just lose and I'll give back everything I just made. Yeah. Which is and a very really common thing to happen to traders. It is. It is because you, you think you're invincible. Like you make, you make a 5% gain and you're like, dude, I just, I just crushed it. And then you take another trade and you're down like 3%. And then you take another trade and then, you're up two and then you're down seven. So then you end up losing everything you just made. Yeah. How true is that? Oh, it's, well, it's kind of like greed, you know, be happy with your daily bread and like, just walk away. Yeah, that's right. Put the toys down, walk away, reset your brain so that you can uh, think properly again. (laughs) So yeah, well, thinking there are we're, we're emotional creatures and if we're not careful and we don't keep that under control we can really hurt ourselves <clears throat> you know we have all these desires and stuff we have these these goals that we want to achieve and stuff and if we're not uh cautious about how we're handling our emotions and trading then you can really lose your shirt yeah and it can set you back a month. One day of lapse in judgment can set you back a week, a week easily, a week easily. But if you have a really hard go, it can set you back like a month. And I've actually seen it personally where it can set you back for weeks trying to dig yourself out of the mess you made for yourself. Yeah. And, and I'm, only, I'm only talking from experience. Because <laughs> I've yeah. I've done that. Um, I've I, I took a hard one a couple times where like ego and pride and everything else just uh, took over. Holy smokes, man! If you guys look at Ethereum and XRP, it's flying up. It's like a clone. It's a clone. It, I've never seen something so close. That's crazy. Oh, even uh, Bitcoin now is in the same big drop and then consolidation. And then it's uh, up over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. But they look the same, the same exact movements. You want me to show my chart of the Ethereum? Um, yeah, and then maybe throw it up against uh, mm-hmm. against Bitcoin or Ripple, and then show, like see how how similar it is. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, we can do that while we're waiting for another alert to pop up. If you want, yeah, we'll see if we can. Oh, it, it was an alert, apparently. It was an alert. Okay, I don't have those on my yeah, uh, on my chart. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to stop sharing. Sh- you can you can you can go ahead and share there. Even I'll stop sharing. Okay. Okay, here we have it. We just got an, got an up arrow on Ethereum. This is on the five minute chart. Yeah, five, five minute. minute. Yeah, let me just. Uh, oh, we know it's on. Oh, look at that. I yeah, didn't see that much red. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that much red either. Well, well, I was just on my regular charts, but uh, yeah, that's a no go, but. Um, but I, I see I, the. Yeah. Go ahead. 
And I was just going to say, I have to wonder because the overall trend has been that it's been going up uh, yeah. for the last several days. So uh, I think it was just kind of pulling back and correcting itself. And maybe that's why it uh, has all the, these red zones now. But I think it's going to, might not be today, but I think it's going to start breaking through some of these reds. That's my Oh, yeah, I believe so as well. I believe so as well. I'm uh, I'm curious to see what the Fibonacci retracement is on all these moves. I'm just gonna pull that out here. Where are you so at? You're talking from up here to uh, no, from the origination, from like from way into the left. Um, let me see. Oh man, you you guys the kidding me this what? is a joke so if you take ripple for example and you go back to like the original move april 3rd before it took this huge spike up it's actually rejected the 61.8 retracement and that's where that big dip was I have issues trying to do the Fibo on this on this platform. Oh yeah, no, I. So yeah. I, I wanted to show the guys, but um, I, I. It's it. Here it is. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's. It, uh, so it's you want to take control of my my. Take control of my screen, and you can draw it up and do whatever. Uh, are we talking? So what I guess you I'm trying to figure out what what I was gonna put the fibo on it to see what kind of retracement it, it okay uh well, I mean, actually you can eyeball it you can really see that it's almost hundred percent like maybe ninety percent from the origination right well is this ripple no this is ethereum this is ethereum right yeah it's ethereum yeah. okay I can do I can do it on my uh trading view I can show it on trading view here that okay. doesn't take that's that's yeah, that so let me take show. the take the. Uh, let's see where oh, Judson, don't touch XMR. Are you crazy? XMR. XRP. Yeah, eat an apple instead. <laughs> Apples are better. Uh, let's see where's my chart here. Uh, anonymous. Um, like Al likes to say, my crystal ball has been lost. Uh, mine's actually. Uh, broken and I don't know where gold is going I don't forecast I just react to what arrow tell yeah. tells me to do here's the uh, here's our trading view chart and this is uh, oh, market this is cap. ripple this is ripple and uh, you can see way back here in April of this year it, it, it was well, it, it was all the way over here this was uh, I think it was in February when we had the announcement where and it just got crushed. It was all the way up here around the. Um, this is Ripple, yeah. This is Ripple. Yeah, that's Ripple. Yeah, you're on daily, uh, yeah. Why am I? Why is that reading so high though? I don't understand that. Why am I getting such a high number I here? Oh no. You're you're at market cap, my friend. You're not at the uh, price. I'm in the wrong one. Yeah, you're. Let's go try to XRP, crypto. Maybe I'm the wrong. Yeah, you're XRP. at uh, XRP. There it is, my friend. Where is it? XRP USD. No, that's Tether. Yeah. No, X, down below, Al. XR, XRP USD. How about this one? Yeah. Yeah, Bitfinex is fine. Down cool. Down here. Well, there's two. Yeah, okay. We'll just do Bitfinex here. Yeah, that's the one I use. That's there one. we that go. Looks really, that looks a whole lot better. I was worried about that the other day. Okay, so here's here's where the, the I mean the price was pretty much hanging right around. This is where it kind of broke out at fifty nine cents, and this was back in uh, pretty much here is a breakout. This was in April of well April fourth. April fourth and fifth is when that original yeah. burst we, happened. And, and this is back in February where the, I think there's announcements saying oh the, don't do this, SEC. don't buy that, and SEC, SEC. announcement. Yeah, and they started crushes it went from it went from eighty one or oh, seven seventy five all the way down to forty ish. Yeah. And then it sort of went sideways for a while and then it went up to a dollar, oh, two dollars, about two dollars. 
And now, so if this is the beginning of the move, this big extended range candle. So what I'd be looking at doing is I'd be looking at taking this, to, to, this is my favorite Fibonacci tool. It's a Fibonacci extension. I take it up to the, from the starting point to the peak and here's the retracement. And it came and you see it retrace back. If I come over here and look at the number here, this is a 61.8 retracement. So from here to here, it came back 61%, almost 62%. And you see it bounced right off of that. So now the next move that I would be looking at with this would be pretty much back to where the high was at 197. And then we could probably go on up to this one-to-one uh, -one area. So I would take it out. Here's the one-to-one -one from here to here. And from here to here is the same distance. It'd be kind of like that be your stick. So I'd be looking at a target somewhere up around the one to the 78 or 79% or 78.6% re retracement. So like 240, 250. This would be the tar target zone. Just draw this up here and make this my target. And then I, what I do is I back the target off about 50%. So I, I split the difference between the green line and the red and orange line. And anything up in this zone would be my target for the next move to the upside. Once it gets up there, it could keep on going, but it could also get a, find a few sellers to bring it back down to reality again. And then now you start getting a trend line. Then the trend line starts coming in somewhere like around in this area. And here's the first pullback. Come, there's a pullback, comes up, we test it, come back, test the trend line. And now you become a buyer. Every time it hits the trend line, you become a buyer. All the way up. And that's the way I would an analyze that one. Let's just say if that if that move goes to where you're saying, that will be a pretty substantial profit on uh, with the amount of positions that I have open yeah. on Ripple. Well, when I say about it, it's a very it's very inexpensive right now. I mean, you could buy it at no a dollar twelve. If it comes up here to two dollars, you just now doubled your money on that on that move. Oh yeah, that's not even, and that's not even, um, that's not even leveraged. You're just doing, you're just doing the price. Leverage is substantially higher. Okay, let's see what else. Let's see if there's anything in the chat. If anybody has any questions or comments or wants uh, some wants something, just uh, put it in the question answer box. We'd be more apt to see it than in the chat box. Yeah. Just another reminder. Uh, we only have so many eyes and uh, we're more apt to we always check the uh, question answer box first that we can kind of see which ones we've answered, which ones we didn't. And um, um, let's see. Someone was saying about the I was asking about gold. Let's take a look and see what gold is doing today. I don't know if I have that on. I don't know if I have that here or not. Do you? I don't know. I, a, I, th I did. Um, I may have taken it off to make some room for some of these. I don't know. Well, okay. well, let's just go to, we can just do it this way. Go to the market watch and find my gold, which is right here. Put a chart up. Close my market watch down, put my template on. Arrow's been working real good lately, hasn't it? With the lag issues, there's nothing. Yeah, I haven't I have any yeah, I haven't noticed any problems with it since they upped the VPS and changed to this format. Yeah. Uh, so here's school. This is on the one hour. We'll just bring it down to a 15 minute chart. No, oh, let's tell you, let's just see where let's just see where the high of gold has been. So gold was all the way. Now uh, back, and this is on a daily chart, so we can see what gold has actually done in the in the past here. And it is forming. We have a little bit of here's our here's our high, here's our low, here's our retest. So now uh, this is the this is uh, the summer high. This is was up around the 19 2000 area, and right now at the pullback on this thing, if we look and see where the high was, where the low was. It's crossing over the Fibonacci's. Uh, it came up to the 23% retraced that double bottom right now. So right now I see this thing's tr trying to trend back to the upside. 
it's got a little ways to go before it's going to get back up to that two thousand uh, dollar mark. Uh, we have so here's our bottom trend line. Here's our upper trend line. We actually have a little bit of a break of this. Here's the uh, here's like a double top here. Here's a here's the anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. Let's draw a trend line off of that, and we can see that it broke this downward trend. And so it broke the downward trend pretty much this morning. Came back up, broke it, come back down, retest it, and now it's on its way up. But we also have this moving average right here. So you, you can actually start looking at this thing starting to, it's starting to trend. Let's go to our 15-minute uh, chart and see what it looks like on the 15-minute with those same trend lines. Just doing all this while we're waiting around here for the next alert to come through. So we did have a... To a, a daily 200 moving average way up in here. But on the 15 minute chart that we're on right now, you can see the 200 moving average is below everything. So right now it is trending to the upside with some pullbacks. Um, here was, a, here was, a, here was a, where it kind of broke this morning. Came up, broke it, came back down, we tested. This was, this was a significant break right in here. And it's now starting to follow this trend line from the bottom. Again, the smaller the time frame, the less significant they become. But here's your here's your anchor, here's your hit, here's your first your third hit of the trend line retest. This thing does look like it wants to go up higher with pullbacks along the way. So now it's forming a little bit of a channel. We have this high, came back up, tested it, broke, now it's made a new high with a pullback. So I would be looking, again, I'd be looking at using this as my anchor. Here's a, here's a hit and it got broken. Now this was, uh, so this is the channel that I'd be looking at where it's trading in between this level and this level. And if it breaks through the bottom, if I retest this area, it may go up higher, it may go lower, but right now it's, uh, it's trending up, but I don't know that it's going to, how far, Again, this is where my crystal ball is a little foggy. I don't know how high it's going to go. I do know that it does seem to be following this trend. As long as it can stay above this arrow moving average on this one hour chart, I'd say it's still going to be staying in an upper trend. Um, a lot of times, too, is I'll draw a secondary trend line off a higher time frame. And I'll kind of parallel these a little bit with um, and just see how this thing parallels here. It's got a little bit of a, a little bit more of an upward slope to it. But here's your secondary trend line. Here's the anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. If this breaks, this could be the trap right in here. We still have this moving average. I say right now, if you're long on it, I could say stay long for a longer period, for a longer duration. Gold is not one of those that I trade on a regular basis. So uh, if it's if it gets up to you know an all-time high like it did this summertime, this past summer, or last summer, I would uh, you know liquidate some of the holdings and then wait for a pullback to maybe re-enter again. But right now, it's uh. It's got some room to the upside. I mean, I think it likes to think that it kind of bottomed out here. If you if you like gold, I think it may have bottomed out here right around the 1700 uh, area. And now it's so uh, it's going to probably come up and retest 1800. It'll probably find some uh, some sellers up in there, 1800 area. And you're not too far from that right now. And here is a we have a New Zealand yen. Let's take a look at that one since we're. That's what we're here for to look at Forex trades primarily. And let's see, we have this one, move this over here a little bit. And we have a down arrow. We have, looks like it's in an uptrend. We go to a 15 minute chart. I like seeing what the trend is based on the higher time frames. I usually like referencing my trend to the 15 minute. It's like it's too, too red, too green. It's in between the zones. And um, 
not a whole lot there. We'll put an arrow off of this. Actually, what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some lines if I can get it to work here. There we go. Here's the uh, upper target. Here's the lower target. I'll go to that five minute chart where five minute time frame where this alert came through. And right now I'm not seeing any lots of green that's gonna have to go through. It's really range bound right now. And again, if we look at the chart with the New Zealand and yen, Come over here. I'm going to see where's New Zealand. Where New Zealand is way down here. The yen is in the middle. Again, like I said, I try and keep the pairs that are in the middle. I try not to trade those. And you can see on the chart why I say that. But right now, the yen is right smack dab in the middle of all eight pairs. It's neither strong nor weak. Then New Zealand is relatively weak here, but it's showing it's right in the middle on the higher time frame. So there's no real clear direction. There's no real clear... Um, as you look and see who's winning the race, there's no real clear, clear winner in that race to the strength or to the weakness. So not a trade. Any other questions? Am I muted? No. Okay. There's just no questions. No, no you're just, good. I just thought I say, it just said you are muted. I thought, why am I muted here? But uh, okay. No. Oh, you're fine, Al. I was, uh, you would have told you long ago if you I, were. May, I may not have heard it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you're I fine. Can't hear you. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. Any iris uh, trades? I don't see any iris things here either. The last one I see with iris was last night, I think. Last night at 345 yesterday afternoon uh, or no the Friday so I don't have anything since uh, Friday Judson closes XRM Matt at a small profit <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> you know it's you, you don't you don't stay in mistakes right you, you get out of your mistakes as fast as you can and then you chalk it up to a mistake <laughs> but don't sit in your mistakes Hope and praying that it's going to work. That's not going to help your head at all. And Mario was asking if we can look at the pound Aussie. Sure. Oh, yeah. Pound Aussie. What time frame would you like? 15 I'm minutes? assuming 15. Unless they say otherwise, let's just That's, call it 15. We'll start with the 15 and we can always go from yeah. there. Yeah, 15, he says. <laughs> pound Aussie. Okay. Here. Well, we have a. At no bounce. We have an arrow in the middle of nowhere. Um, that's on the 15 minute pound Aussie. Let's see something here. So when I don't have anything to go on here, again, I'm going to go over to this. Pound is strong on all four time frames. So that's so uh, we want to trade to the strength of the pound. Now, where's the Aussie? The Aussie's down here. It's in the bottom third, bottom two, bottom three. So we could possibly trade this to the upside of the a pound and so let's look at this so if we go to a uh, let's see if there's anything on the five minute okay there's a red zone at the five minute let's see how much room do we have from where we had a, that's, that's 70 pips uh, where are we at right now to the upside That's 39 pips the upside on the five minute chart to the and with the pound being strong. I say that's the possibility of a trade. It's a little bit late in the game for the uh, arrow, but if this is a we have an arrow on the pound Aussie, this is on the 15 minute chart. That was basically uh, how much time do we have on this uh, 15 minute? That was about 12 minutes ago. Actually, I could almost take this one. Here's the alert. We have enough room. We have enough room. Here's an alert. It's not a bounce arrow go type of thing, but we do have room to the upside and we do have the strength to the upside. Now, how much have we given up already? It's at uh, 79.26. 
So we're already 13 pips into the game already. Now, but we do have a lot of room for the upside. I would be looking at, let's just see what a, um, this is a 15 minute chart. Let's go and put, we don't have to be in a hurry for this. Let's go to the five minute. And we have this is a move in the upside. Here's the entry. I would put a, I think we can put a buy stop in at the, let's put a buy stop in on right up in here, just a little bit. We still have room to the upside. That way if it pulls back a lot steeper, we're, we're not in the trade yet, 179.34. And I'll go with a trade, buy stop. Hey, Mosin, you got a great question there. You said, isn't the uh, RSI and the strength meter the same thing? Um, it's not. And I can, no. it, it's plotted as like the, it looks like an RSI, but it's much more complicated and uh, ha contains a whole bunch more um, values than just a simple RSI. So you'll never it, it just doesn't uh they're not they're not apples and apples one thing that's nice here i can go to the uh, let's go to my we're looking at the british uh what british aussie i can go to the british aussie trade and i just take these off here just for right now because i'll just make it a point here this is a whole other indicator. But right now you can see what I've done is I have just the British and just the Aussie on this. So I can see right here at the bottom, just those two pairs, how they're fitting with each other. And you can see there's like a five point spread here on the one minute. There's a five point spread on the 15 minute, on the five minute. And there's a six point spread. So that tells me this thing's got room to the upside. So I feel pretty comfortable taking that trade. If it come, breaks on up, and so we're looking at, uh, uh, but you can see where the, the purple one is the British pound, the, or the green one is the Aussie. And I can just see right off the bat, which one's strong. And if this one pulls back on the one minute, I know that's just a pullback. Uh, look at my targets. I'll go over to a higher time frame. I'm not seeing anything real di uh, directly where the target is, but if I go to a higher time frame, we'll start with a one minute or one hour chart. And I'm gonna look and see where Where's my extended range candle? Here's my extended range candle. Here's the origin of that. You can see it's breaking through the top of that right now. Here's another extended range, all red, 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 red. Came back a little bit of a pullback. It just broke through the top of this little range right here, which tells me this is gonna be the next target area right in this area. Um, we'll be looking right about in this area right now for the next target. We may get a little bit of a bounce off of this, or it could keep on going. We don't know, but I would expect to see a little bit of a bounce in here. Now, this is on a one-hour chart, and let's go to a 15-minute chart and see if we can kind of tweak that a little bit. And you can see uh, it, this was a, a drop, came back up, retested it, kept on going down. This is the first time it retested this area, was rejected, and now it's making new high. Now it's going for this one. And so we're looking at, uh, we're probably in that trade now. And I'm going to be looking, I'm just looking for uh, what my target is going to be. My target right now would be somewhere around 179.54. Come over here, see where 179.54 is. Uh, where's my 179? And this is at 179.66 is where this target is. I didn't even put a target in yet. We just stuck it into the trade. And if I want to go for five pips, I would modify this. We got in at uh, 179.35. Let's go for 179.42 for a target. Or oh, shoot, we're already there. Uh, let's go 179.54. That's where we said that zone was. There's 54, close enough. There's my target. And you can see that's well below where the, uh, now you could go for more if you wanted to. I'm happy with seven pips. And that's where that, that, uh, 
that tool that we have really helps to give you the confidence that you still have lots of room to the upside. You have the, the strength is to the upside. You had the arrow that kind of guided us there. The guide the arrow gave us the alert. And whoever called this one out, thank you for this trade. This is a nice little trade right now. Leslie took 10 pips on it, she tells us. Yeah. I mean, and it's, uh, I mean, right now, this could very well go on up to this uh, blue line. I'm not usually, I'm not, I mean, if I don't have a chance to look at it and I feel really good about it, I might just let it go there. But most of the time, if I can't monitor the trade, if I step away or something like that, I'll just go for my, you know, my, tar my daily target. And I, like I said, all I need is one good trade a day and you're, and you can uh, be a very wealthy person just with that five pips and just be happy with that. Uh, let's see what am I looking at. I'm going to trade this. See this comment here. And nope, wrong one. I want the profit in pips. I like seeing the profit in pips, so I can just look and see how many pips I've got. So right now I'm at 5.7, 5.8. I don't need the comment on this. Let me take that one off. There we go. And we can go to our one minute chart that we want to really tweak it in here. I say if you take a 2% of your account trade and you get 2% a day, in this case, I would need to. Uh, well, so I've got to set up for 2%, which would be my uh, 0.5 lot size. So if I get, I would need, uh, with a 15 pip stop, 7 pip target would give me a 1% of my account. But just do that twice a day or even once a, once a day, you know, it's still looking at 5% a week for your return. Yeah, 1% a day is pretty substantial, Al. If you can consistently do that, it's life changing. Yeah. I think people, sorry, I think people think that they need to make 5% a day. The The goal is to be consistent in whatever you do. If you can consistently make 1% a day and you know that you take your first trade and you win it, then walk away. Go live your life, right? Go, yeah, go do, yeah. spend time with the kids and go bike and do whatever you want to do, but don't. Don't tr don't force yourself to try and get 5% a day. You're just putting all that extra stress and you're going to have like a bias on the trade and you're going to try to trade the same pair and you're trying like it, it's just so hard, right? And just remember, we had the uh, zone up here where I had this. It was at 66 is where the zone was. But when I said when we went to the trading view and we found out where uh, the visual zone, not to the arrow zone. It was at 139.54, so that's where my target is. But you can see it came up there and start and it rejected a little bit. So there's some. What's happening is the sellers are coming in a little bit ahead of that. And so just taking a little. I'm just. It came up right now. We're right about back to break even. We were up about six pips. I could have taken that out. Now the question is, if we want to uh, be waiting on this. There's a euro yen. Oh, well, it's still showing some strength. Now it could come up here and pull back significantly back to the arrow. Um, and the question is, do you want to ride that out to, or do you want to just take some quick profits and be done to go on the next trade? There are seven, eight, there's eight pips. Nice little push back up again. And I'm just going to go ahead and close that out and say, thank you. Move on to the next trade, that one's done. And now we're going over here to the Euro Yen, five minute chart. So just a question, when you have this dashboard on, do you always have to keep resizing your chart when you open a new one? Like when you- I do, yeah, yeah, you do. It, 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 it opens up with the default of some, I'm not sure if I can set the charts up as a default. I haven't quite figured that one out yet, but I always- Oh, you to, mean the, uh, the size yeah, and stuff? Yeah, I and mean, when you click yeah. on it, it comes up with the same size, but I just keep my dashboard open. I just use about two thirds of my screen for uh, and just resize it like that. Then again, I put my template on. You have to reload the template. Every time you put a new chart, you have to reload the template. So I just uh, load my template up and... I don't know if oh, really if you're using default. a custom template, but when you open it up, you can use Arrow, right? You, 
if you want to have like uh, your moving average and other stuff like that, additional stuff, then you have to lo load your template every time. Right, but can you change the size? Like when you click on the when you click on the chart, can you change the size? Oh, sorry, I already have that one up there. Let's just say I put up a new chart. Can you change the size and format of this? At, when I this box, no, chart? you can't preset that. Okay, that's not just to my way, knowledge. That's just the way it comes. They come up. Yeah. So here's our Euro British. Put that up. Here's the here's the arrow. We had a down arrow Euro British. Five minute chart. We've got room to the downside. Again, I'm gonna come over here to my heat map and see where the Euro British is. Here's the Euro in the middle. Here's the British at the top. Euro's in the middle, Euro's in the middle, British is at the top on all four time frames, but the Euro's right in the middle. I'm not gonna be in a real big hurry to take that one. I'll measure it out and whoop, one. I'll measure it out and see what the potential is. But my first thought is, it's not there is enough range to it to make me want to take it. Um, plus, all, it's right here at the consolidation of all the moving averages. Here's where the up move was. Came back down. It's retesting this. We have a, an anchor. Here's a here's a near hit. Here's a hit. Here's the retest. I'm be looking at this trend line from this direction. I'll be looking at that trend line, looking to see if it's going to come down and test and re-hit it. Now I'm also going to check and see where my arrow zones are. And I'm looking, I'm thinking it's going to be in an uptrend. Maybe not. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. It is in a, technically it's in a downtrend, not a real strong one, I would say, but it is in a downtrend. So we're going to mark this as a down scroll back out again i don't really like this trade all that well to the trend line we're not looking at a lot of room to the trend line where i would expect we may get a bounce here's the arrow here's the trend line that's only seven pips again not enough for me we do have 11 pips again still not enough for me come all the way down here there's the 20 pips it would have to get through this zone by the time it gets through this zone so already at your target so pass on this one we can look at it on a 15 minute chart. We'll mark the zone where we have the arrow and see what it looks like on a higher time frame. Here's my arrow. Go to 15 minute. You can see that the uh, it's still an uptrend. Nice little wick here. We have all these are uh, right now, it's in the consolidation of the moving averages. Looks like it's bouncing off of that. Again, they kept us out of out of trouble this in this way. Now, if it breaks the trend line, if it breaks the trend line, comes back up and retests the trend line, then we have room to the downside on the 15 minute. But again, remember we had some zones here in the uh, five minute that were kind of going to be somewhat problematic. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Anything else? So, again, we wait. And let me see, it's coming up on 8.30, so we should get a 15-minute alert here. Another five minutes, we may get something here. If you would, give me a show of hands how many people use TradingView or plan to use TradingView. Mm, not a lot. A couple. I'm not even seeing any hands. Right? I see two. Okay. No, okay. Oh, there's a few. There we go. Now, now they're coming through here. Okay. There's a few. All right. Probably a little bit of lag there. It could be. It's a little bit of a delay. Well, that. Down in the chat, too, they're saying there's 
a few number of people use it. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Well, let's see. Yeah, again, send me the email and uh, then I will uh, respond to the email with the uh, the link to get you guys up and running this week with it. I'll put the email address in uh, the chat again for yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and uh, covers. Yeah, go ahead and put the email. <clears throat> I said anybody that who I said this only works on Trading View. And after this session, I will. Uh, let's see where we. I'll, I'll send you an email. I'll send an email in response, and a link to the uh, session where I will go and tell you guys how to load this thing in. It's easier to show you than to try to explain it. Okay, hey, question. How do I get black screen for arrow? Matt, do you want to take this one? For sure. So when you uh, go into MT4, you're going to be able to right click and then go on any chart you want. And then what you do is you, um, you simply load your template. It's called blackout template. Right here. You have to request a new VPS first, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You need That's to have good. that first. As yeah, so you get with support to say that uh, you need to upgrade your VPS for the arrow, they'll give you a new VPS. And, and keep in mind, when they do that, any charts that you have, any settings you have, or any of your other templates is going to be gone. So make sure you keep a copy or something so you know what your settings were. If you use, especially if you're using like variable or gearbox or some other software that you have a, you save the settings and you have the template or take a snapshot of your uh, expert advisor's input setup so that you have that information. Cause when they reload the VPS, all those templates that you had are gonna be gone and then you have to reload the templates. Let's see, take this off. Uh, you can see this one is just sort of bouncing around here. Nothing real conclusive right now. And we should have another one minute. We should maybe get some more alerts here. See if we get a 15 minute or 30 minute alert. I've got the major index or major Forex pairs and I've got a couple of the um, indexes. I don't think I have gold in here. I think if it is, it's hiding. I didn't want to bring too many uh, up because then I can't see my open trade box. Here we go, five minute chart. Let's see, we just got a close of the 30 minute candle. And we have an Aussie yen. I'm over here, the Aussie yen, down arrow, five minute chart. So we, as soon as I go to a five minute chart, I immediately lower my expectations of the trade because we're in such a much smaller time frame. And I said most of these are set up for a 15 minute chart with a 20 pip target, 40 pip stop. Uh, let's see, we have. Let's mark the, here's the arrow. Ish. Put my template up. Load the template. As I have an extra moving average in here, I have the 62 exponential moving average. That's the orange one. I like using that one along with the uh, arrow moving average and the 200 moving average. You can see they're all consolidating right here. Strong move down. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of room to the downside on this chart. Let's see. There's only five pips to the to the zone. Aussie in. 
Uh, again, the yen is kind of still stuck in the middle of the pack. It's getting a little bit stronger to the downside. Mm -hmm. The Aussie's uh, not all that. It's kind of weak as well. So, again, nothing real conclusive. I'll pass on that one. Let's go with the Swiss yen. They're both, that's, again, same same scenario. Swiss yen down arrow, five minute chart. Here to go. I don't see, I see it here. I don't see it over here on the chart. Why am I not seeing on the chart? And that should be a down arrow, Swiss, Euro, New Zealand. I'm not seeing that one on here either. New Zealand on the 15 minute. Let's take a look at that one. That's why it's nice to have this alert box because sometimes they just don't show up on there and I don't know why. But uh, if you get it on one or you get it on the other, take a look at it. 15 minute Euro New Zealand right here. Here, do I already have it? Why do I not see Euro New Zealand? There it is. Up arrow right into the red zone. Put my template on. And look and see where our strength is. Looks like it's got, ooh, we go to higher time frame. It changes a little bit. All right, now we have basically four zones on the uh, red zones, three green zones. So we have really downward pressure. So it's more in a downtrend. Although I think it's consolidating because you see how these moving averages are starting to uh, change directions here a little bit. I had a question here while we're looking at that from Aaron. Uh, he's asking, uh, how does he get all of his pairs on one dashboard? I have all 28 pairs, but I can't see all of them. Uh, you just have to make the dashboard bigger. That When you load up the dashboard on your expert properties, if you load the, there's a drop down off of here where it shows you kind of what you want to be looking at. And here's all 28 pairs. You select that. It'll load up all 28 pairs, but you're just going to have to uh, scroll this. Um, you're going to have to scroll this, move this, up and I mean right now you're not gonna see all the only way you can see all twenty eight pairs is open this thing up all the way down to all the way to down the, to the bottom. All the way but... down to the bottom. You can't you can't scroll that you it, it won't scroll. Basically it's, it, it's what you see is what you get. You just have to make sure this this drop down this box is just down as far as you can. And you may have to drop in other words if you have this bar up way up way up here you're gonna be. You're not gonna be able to. You can only take this down to wherever this level is. So that basically, you no, don't, don't want to do that. So basically, you're gonna to have to grab this little, this whole area here. Get your arrow to grab it, and then slide that whole area down. So alternatively, you can also add two screens. So say you want to trade. Um, your you can open up a second chart, and you can have two dashboards open at the same time. We have to layer them, either have them side by side or layer next one to on, top, on top of you. Yeah, next, you, if you 
you can put them on top of each other, but you can not can be able to see it. And if you put it sideways, you're going to be giving up some of your chart space. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I do. Is I I just have it there, so when I open up another chart, then I'll uh, I'll just whatever I'm looking at, I'll just overlay on top of everything. So I'll have on one, I'll have my currency pairs and on the other chart, on the other uh, dashboard, I'll have all of my uh, cryptos and everything else. It all depends on how much real estate you have on your monitors. And Jetson says, make sure he doesn't have the terminal open. Control T. I'm not sure which terminal that is, but well, this the terminal here is. Uh, that's where you see all your oh, trades. Oh, I see. Okay. And that would that's that would true. give you that would give you a little bit more real estate, but then you're not going to see your open trades then. Yeah, I I always keep my my terminal open, but that's a little bit different when it comes to setting up charts and stuff. I um I I've liked to have two dashboards open. Like I said, and that's uh, just okay. worked out well. You can toggle in and out with Control T. So yeah, so that's pretty quick. Just Control T, and you can go. Have it, there it is. Have a quick look and get out of it again, so you have more real estate. Oh yeah. So it's, well, there we go. Yeah. Well, that's kind of handy. Yeah, that's that's just part that's of the good. Solution. That's a good shortcut. Yeah. yeah I didn't know. Didn't know that. Good trick to have. See, that's what's nice about this room. People know, know, I mean, I don't know everything, that's for sure. And I always learn something from you guys. I appreciate that. Yeah, I do have another question from Daniela as well. A uh, question about setting the money zone. Uh, she says that her broker is uh, Greenwich Mean Time plus three. With the calculator, I have to enter begin nine o'clock end to 100. But when I disconnect and reconnect the VPS, she has to enter again. Not sure why that's happening. The, the, money, zone should, the, the money zone should be by default. It should be just on the charts for what the money zone is, is my understanding. You shouldn't have to be changing the money zone. Yeah, that's right. You shouldn't have to change it. You, uh, you have to do the manual calculation according to your broker and stuff. Um, we all do. Yeah, but the money zone is the money zone. Yeah, I mean that that what it is what it is. So whatever time it is for you at that point, uh, for Eastern Standard for us, it's one a.m. is the begin of the money zone. So, but, but what you can do is you can look and see what put a line at the at the beginning of the money zone and see what the time is. Then you can look and see put another line say on the open candle that you're in right now, and see what that time is. And so right now, the time on this is at 15.30, which means this is saying that 3.30 in the afternoon, I look at my clock and, and, um, and my, that my broker time right now is at uh, 12.30. So this is basically three hours away, three hours difference from, so you make that calculation. Or you could just say, look at what your local time is. And like right now, for me, it's 8.40. So I know when this thing says, 15.30, my time, my local time is at 8, say 8.30. Yeah. And so the difference is going to be seven hours. So I just know that whatever time this is at 8 o'clock, I'm seven hours behind it. So when this thing says 8 o'clock, I know that my time is uh, 1, 1 o'clock, 1 a.m. But the money zone doesn't change. This little shaded area is the money zone no matter what time frame you're in. Now, it's maybe different as far as what your local time is to it, but this is the time that it's set up for. So you don't have to, you don't need to be changing this in your settings. You just need to yeah, uh, calculate absolute. what your time is from your, your local time to it. Does that okay. make sense, Daniela? Hopefully that helps. That's right. Thank you. But okay. Nate told us to input according to my broker. I don't know why he'd do that because the money zone is when it is. Like regardless of what your broker is. So I maybe we're misunderstanding your question. Because when regardless of what time it is at your broker, the money zone begins at the same time 
at the same point in time all over the world, whatever current time that is in that particular your area where you're living is going to differ, but it starts when it starts. It's an absolute. So I'm not sure. Yeah, unless he's got something else he's trying to convey with that, but then I don't know what he, then I'm not sure what he would mean. misunderstood your question or we're, we're misunderstanding your <laughs> question, but uh, the money zone is always going to show up exactly the same place on the chart. What time it is in your area is going to be the different. That's what's going to differ from everybody else. That's all. So basically, you're, I think you're, what are you, five or six hours ahead of us? So if it's at, uh, if the money zone starts at 1 a.m. Eastern Standard, uh, where you are, it'll be your 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. because you're ahead of us. Does that help any? I do have another question from Sandy, which is uh, basically um, a general question on position sizing. Uh, and it's a good question, actually. It's a very good question, Sandy. When you've got a couple of trades going, for example, and uh, it's still uh, in a bit of drawdown, like, it, you know, it's pulling back or whatever, and you want to place another trade, are you basing your position position size on the new trade on the equity that's left? Or are you still basing it on the balance, disregarding that there's another trade going on right now that's in drawdown? Uh, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, I generally just, hmm. For me personally, what I do is I let each trade stand on its own as if it were an individual trade. What you do have to watch out is what your free margin is. This little thing down here, if that starts getting to where it's uh, your free margin is getting challenged, then you may have too many positions on. You, you have to be aware of how much you have in your account and how much free margin you have. Uh, generally, uh, I can usually take a couple of trades Usually I don't have more than two or three trades open at any one time. Uh, but if it starts getting down to where your free margin starts getting a little bit challenged, where it starts going to, uh, you know, well, if it starts getting to negative or to very close to zero, then you have too many positions open. You may want to close them out. But until then, I just don't really worry too much about it. So, um, so Al, what if I, <clears throat> I'm going to add something to what, what uh, maybe a little bit more, but even um, if you're concerned about your your margin and and in big drawdown, it means you're probably over leveraging your account. Like I I have yet to have an instance where I'm in enough trades that I'm kind of changing my position size because I don't risk more than two percent of my trading account per trade, which means that I could have five trades open and only risk 10%, but I don't, I'm not going to risk, I'm not going to have five different trades open generally. Right. As and a rule I'll of thumb. I'll add one other thing that um, Sandy had, she's basing her trades on 0 0.01 per 100. I think that's a little bit risky personally. Well, it's, it's a big, yeah, it's well, it depends what your risk appetite is. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if you have a $1,000 account, then if she's putting each trade on as 0 0.10, that's pretty high. Uh, considering, yeah. And you won't be able to take five trades with that account. No. Five different positions. You'll be way too close to getting margin called. So, yeah, right. that, that, let me, that's let me, get, let me put the Let me get the pip calculator. Yeah, whip the calculator yeah, out of so okay, here's the pip calculator, and that's on that's on um, currency pairs exclusively. If you're talking about indices, that's a whole different world. All right. So and, and we have a little drop down that kind of explains that a little bit on this thing. So but let's say let's just talk uh, in general. Let's say you have a one thousand dollar account, and you're going to risk you no know, two percent. You're only risking twenty dollars on a on a thousand dollar account, but with with a thousand dollar account, say we're using uh, fifteen pip stop, 
let's just make a 20 pip stop for easy, easy math. Uh, that's going to allow you to take a 0.1 position. You could basically take five trades at 2% with a 0.1 position, and now you'd be risking 10% rather than 2%. But Because each trade, you're looking at this as standalone at each trade. Now, I would not have probably five different trades on with a 2% risk. But most of the time, I really have more than three trades on at any one time. Uh, so then I, at that point, I'd be risking 6% with the same lot size. You shouldn't come anywhere close to risking your free margin because you're really, in essence, if you have three trades open, you're really only lit risking $60 on a $1,000 account. You wouldn't come anywhere close to your free margin. So I just let each, each trade stand on its own, but I'm not risking more than 2% per trade on this account. I don't know if that... And if you look at the, some of these drop downs here, let's say, if you look at this drop down, what pops in right here, it says if you're trading currencies on a 15 minute chart, the standard uh, the risk is 40, 40 pips. If you're trading on a one hour, which is a swing trade, you're looking at 100 pips would be the standard uh, uh, risk. If you're doing the commodities, gold, you're looking at a five minute chart with a 100 pip risk, silver, five minute chart, 20 pip risk. And then you've got the indexes down there. They're all pretty much hundred uh, pip risk unless you're doing the Dow Jones and then you're looking at a thousand pip risk. It just gives little, you an idea of what you're- It has all right here. So, but like I said, really for, uh, to, but to further answer your question, if you're risking 2% of your account, if you have a th now if you have a hundred dollar account and you're doing the same risk level, now you're down to a 0.01. You can't go any lower than the 0.01, but you're still only risking 2%. But now let's say you come up, here's, here's where you could run into a problem. Let's say you're a swing trader, you have a hundred dollar account and you're gonna risk and you're gonna have your stop risk at a hundred dollars. Well, you can't go to a 0.002 loss size. The smallest you can go is a 0.01. So in this case, you'd be way over leveraging your account which means I wouldn't even trade the indexes with that size account. You can't go any lower than a 0.01. And you can see that the calculation says you need to take, you couldn't take any more than a 0.02 to risk only $2. You can't get that low. Yeah, Ernesta, uh, just send, uh, send an email to uh, the, uh, the email that Ava passed in the uh, chat. And Al will send that spreadsheet to you. The calculator, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. I'll put it, I'll put it back in the chat again because it keeps on scrolling up as people post in the chat. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, it's in there fresh. Arminta, go ahead and have a look. It's in the chat again. Are stocks as risky as indices? I. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> huh? I haven't traded. I haven't traded stocks on margin. Uh, I know that Jackie does, and she does tremendously well. But I do know that uh, she is using uh, Envy for the stocks. Um, not sure what. Uh, but that's a whole lot different ball game than actually buying the stock right. itself because right. you're, you're, you're buying uh, basically I'm not sure how they're doing it to be honest with you I don't know I, I don't know enough about it yeah all I know is you can trade it on margin but um... and I here's think stocks a... a little bit slower than the indices do yeah so that's about yeah. the only thing that would make it not as volatile and risky for the most part I Come mean, to I, tomorrow's I, session. Come to tomorrow's session with uh, Jackie, and we'll uh, we'll ask her. Yeah, yeah, she'll be the person to ask about that. We'll ask her what she's doing, and how she's doing it, and uh, whatever. All right. So here's a arrow. We have an arrow on the Aussie yen down arrow. Let's just see how this thing plays out here. We're looking at trend wise, and uh, we're looking at two red zones two green zones. This is a pretty wide area right through here. Uh, it's strong move up, consolidate it, but you still only have two and two. So right now there's really no real clear trend, but I would say it's right now it's basing inside this region right here. So let's pull this thing out a little bit. It's really no, no clear direction on that. 
we have all of our moving averages are consolidating. Uh, we have a little bit of a uh, switch here where the arrow crossed over all three. And right now it's looking like it wants to be in a downtrend. Why don't I just get a, oops, wrong, wrong chart. Let me, there we go. This is the one I want in here. And let's see, we have the arrow, no clear trend direction. But we have the we have a bounce arrow, the go, but we only have a go to this area right in here. And that's looking at uh, looking at 95 versus 86. You have 11 pips, not anywhere close to the 20 pips, or even it's getting close to the 15. Uh, so then I would be looking to see, okay, how strong is this move? The, how strong is the Aussie to the yen? I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, okay, the Aussie is right here in the middle. The yen is right in the middle. Yen's getting a little bit stronger. Aussie's weaker. The yen's starting to, so yen just popped up into the upper third. This is down to the bottom third. Going to be a possibility to trade to, this, to the strength of, a, of the yen. Aussie's still in the middle. We have a three point spread right here between the, the yen is a five, the Aussie is a two, the yen is a five, the Aussie is a two. So it does have some strength to the downside for the yen. Uh, it's a possibility, but the problem with this one is uh, this one may be something that you may want to be looking at a sell stop. Go for the, but I wouldn't go for more than five pips on this. We do have the yen to the strength to the yen side. Let's go to the five minute chart and see what that looks like. Let's see if the zones changed at all. We have a little bit of a pullback right now. The, our Five minute zone is really kind of changed. So we got this right now. Here's the alert. Now we're at 95 versus 90. There's only five pips to the to the target. Uh, it's to me, it's just not enough from where the alert was. Now, if it comes back up and retests this, then we have a little bit of a Fibonacci uh, play on this. Here's our. We don't have any real clear direction, but here's the. Uh, here's the first move down, comes back. If it can come back up to the 50% retracement and give us a little bit of a uh, pattern that says to go short, then you, you would have room to the downside. This one is, uh, I would have to probably go with, uh, I'd like to see at least a 38%, I'd like to see it get at least up into 38%, give it up there, maybe even tag the arrow moving average. That way I could put my stop on the other side of the moving average, I would prefer to have it up. You know, let's see how deep it comes in here. If it comes to this area, we need to have at least five pips above the 50%. And that would be at, uh, let's see, this would be the 50% line is, uh, that's at uh, 8403 called 8405. I'd want my stop to be at least right about in this area. So I want my stop up there and I still want to see, I want to see a pullback. I need more than five pips to my target. So the further this thing pulls back and the sooner I can get into this trade or if I decide to get into it, the happier, I, the better off you would be to, to possibly get your target. But here's where the alert was. And you barely had your five pips. I said, I'd like to see at least 15 pips. And so the 15 pips would be from uh, 83.90. So we'd be looking at 84.05, uh, which is pretty much right about where the 50% uh, retracement is on this. Plus you see here's a strong move down. Here's your wedge right in here. It's coming, it's, here's your little, almost like a little flag pattern. If it comes on up into this zone, then you can, and it breaks the, breaks the wedge. Uh, you can maybe take a shot at it, but I wouldn't go for, I certainly would not go for 20 pips on this. And this is the Aussie yen. All right, my friends. Well, I need to uh, 
I need to jet off, but uh, I hope right, to Matt. see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for the great session. Thanks for thanks for your input. Yeah, thank you. We'll catch you guys uh, sooner than later. All Have right. a great rest of the trading day, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. okay. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Okay, and uh, and for everybody, be uh, looking for. Uh, I'm going to get these emails out to you guys as soon as I can uh, get it, and I'll give you the information on uh, when to meet, how to meet, and how to get this thing uh, set up. For those of you who are sent me the emails, it'll yeah, take me a few minutes. It'll, it'll take me a little time to get that taken care of, but expect it uh, today. And depending on what time I get it out, we may just make it tomorrow or after the session tomorrow. Just a quick reminder, please send your email addresses to the email that I put in the chat. Don't put it in, don't put your email addresses in the chat. Send it to the email that I put right. in. The chat. Yeah, we, we don't that, need to yeah, advertise your emails and all that stuff. Uh, just uh, just send it to uh, trademasters at uh, Gmail and, uh, and I'll get back with you on that. Okay. So with that, we're coming up near the end of the session here. We see how... Uh, See what happens at maybe, we'll see what happens at nine o'clock here and then we'll take it from there. Here's a Euro US at five, five minute chart, Euro US. Let's see what that looks like. It's already in a very tight zone right up in here. I can see that. See you guys later, the ones that are begging off now. Daniela, Eric, Karina. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Yeah, I don't like uh, this. Is have an up arrow, up arrow. Actually, let me get my template here. Template load. Here's my moving average. I think I have a red line here. I'll bet. Yeah, thought I would. Whatever color you make the last line that you drew, that's what's going to come default to the next one. Make this back to my aqua. Here's my arrow. Pretty much right at the open of this. And let's see, it's starting to move away here a little bit. And then we got 11 pips to the upside. This is the target. Mm -hmm. Euro US. US is showing weakness right now. 39 to 45. You only have six pips from its current place right now. If I can if it were to come back and pull back to where the arrow was, you could maybe take a little trade, get five pips out of that. But your spread on this right now, the Euro US spread is two point nope point six. That's not too bad. That's about as good as it gets, actually. But I said I like to see a little bit more room than just no five pips. So if it can pull back to the uh, 120.30 area and still show some strength to the upside, 120.30, where is that? 120.30 is right about there. So if it can pull back into the green zone, I don't know that it will. We're at 37.45, so we could, um, at this point, you could maybe do a buy stop <clears throat> at uh, 40. Still a little tight. It's still, still a little too tight. I'm not going to do it. It's just too tight. I see a little bit more of a pullback, a little bit more of rejection of this area. Right now, here's the pivot high, here's the low, here's, here's where this area was rejected. We don't know how high this is gonna go or if this is gonna come up here and then reject back further. Um, 
I'd like to see a little bit more of rejection, a little bit. I'd like to get the ability to have a more of a breakout with this. I'm not a big fan on breakouts, but I just don't know how high. I just don't know if that's going to go up just to this high or it's going to go up this high. We just, and it's, uh, it's just not enough room. It's not, I'd like to see a little bit more of a pullback. At least pull back to where this trend line is. Here's a high, here's a hit, here's the breakout. I'd like to see it pull back a little bit more to get up to retest this area. And we're now at 902, nothing new coming in. So with that, we're just gonna wrap this thing up. Thanks everybody for coming in this morning. We'll see everybody tomorrow, same time, 7.30 to nine o'clock. And I will, again, I will get those emails out. Uh, I'll start working on them now. And hopefully you'll have something before uh, noon today. And uh, we'll see it when, you know, try and get some information on how to get these things loaded up. And like I said, this is going to be, uh, you guys will be the first ones to get this. It's going to be a free trial. It's going to be a trial period. It's a free trial. We don't know how long that's going to last, but uh, this will be the temporary version. And once we get loaded, get all set up, then you'll get the have the ability to get the uh, more permanent version of the uh, software. So with that, thanks again. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Take care. Have a great day, everyone. See you all tomorrow.